Hello, Ed Doolan here, and welcome to Ken Dodd. Happiness, happiness, the greatest gift that I possess. I thank the Lord that I've been blessed with more than my share of happiness. To me, this world is a wonderful place. I'm the luckiest human in the human race. I've got no silver and I've got no gold, but I've got happiness in my soul. Happiness to me is an ocean tide, a sunset fading on a mountainside, a big old heaven full of stars above. When I'm in the arms of the one I love, oh, happiness, happiness, the greatest gift. That I possess I thank the Lord That I've been blessed With more than my share of happiness Happiness is a field of grain Turning its face to the falling rain I see it in the sunshine Breathe it in the air Happiness, happiness everywhere A wise old man told me one time Happiness is a frame of mind When you go to measuring a man's success Don't count money, count happiness Oh, happiness, happiness The greatest gift that I possess I thank the Lord that I've been blessed With more than my share of happiness Oh, happiness, happiness The greatest gift that I possess I thank the Lord that I've been blessed With more than my share of happiness I got more than my share of happiness G'day, Doddy Great. By Jove, how did you just come knocking? Touch him to hear that again. That was uh, 19, I think we made that, 1963 or 64. So, uh, so it's uh, 40 years ago. You had I mean, some big I, hits. I was, I was very young. Uh, that was me. Yes. You've, as I was trying to say, you've had, you've had, some, you've had some big hits, haven't you? Oh, yes. Well, I've had about, uh, oh, well over 30 songs in the, in the top 20. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the big ones were Happiness, Tears... Um, uh, the river, yeah. uh, think of me wherever you are, broken hearted. Yeah, yeah I'm just, I was very fortunate, Ed. I was very lucky. In those days, in the 1960s, uh, most uh, entertainers, you were given a song by the musical producer or the record company. And they, they are going, uh, make, a, make, a, make a disc of that. Yeah. Um, and they have to, you have to do it, you know. But I was, I was able to choose my songs. So, because I was given lots of songs, and the man, um, the people at uh, EMI were very kind, and the man called Jimmy Phillips, who was uh, a music publisher, uh, they were very good, and they gave me, usually gave me three or four songs, oh, half a dozen songs a year, and I'd, I'd pick a couple out. Uh, but I picked some marvellous songs, wonderful, I, but also, uh, I wasn't the greatest picker in the world, because I turned down, for instance, turn it, I said, no, it's too much like the old, down by the old middle scream, and it was, I love you because <laughs> you are, and yeah, I turned that down. I also turned another song down, I said, no, it, it, it's, it's really like a Sally Army song, this, and I, Oh, viva España, today we're off to sunny... Yeah, so, 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 I wasn't right all the time, but some of the time I was, and I, I had some good, and I had lovely people uh, with, with me, you know, with Mike Sams, the Mike Sams yeah. singers, they were absolutely charm, lovely people. With your voice, was there a decision, should I go into singing or should I become uh-huh. a comic? No, I don't think so, no, I, um... We all, we, I love singing. We all love singing. We we're all m- very musical. We all love singing in our house. We had to because there's no lock in the bathroom door. <laughs> but we, uh, we all love singing, and we came from a very musical family. My father, uh, he had a, a musical ear shaped like a trombone. <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, he did. He played the saxophone, which is an ill wind that nobody blows good. <laughs> and, and we all loved singing. And I was in the church choir till they found out where the noise was coming from. Uh, so I generally, did, but uh, no, I was. It was the comic thing. Uh, when you when you used to go to variety builds, my father used to take you around to different theatres. I noticed that the engine driver, you know, as a little boy, I noticed that the engine driver of a variety show was always a comedian. Yeah. So uh, I, that's what I, I, I used to tell me dad when I was about oh, eleven or twelve. I said, dad, how do you comedy? And uh, he told what was, me. What he, was your first? What was your first paid gig? First big gig was uh, St Edward's Orphanage, about uh, on a Christmas day. It was about uh, half a mile from where we live in Nottingham. And uh, the father superior called me into his office and he gave me half a crown. 
see, which was very, and I tied it up in ribbon, and uh, that was my first thing. Then about uh, a month later, my the headmaster of the school, I was at the junior school, uh, in Oshiash, uh, invited me to do a parent-teacher's social. And uh, for that one, he gave me a shilling. So, you see, I learned a very, very important lesson in children's ed, how to take a cut gracefully. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to take a cut. Now listen, 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 listen. I, uh, for the benefit well, of our audience. I, I would not know. I was in a, wasn't a comic in those days. <laughs> I was a ventriloquist, wasn't I? Yes. See, he'll tell it. There's Dickie Mint. He's sitting here. For the benefit of our listeners, uh, Ken and I have spoken on a number of occasions, and I've never actually ever got through the interview. I just think you should know this before oh, we start. Oh, you did. You did. I did. I did. I let you say good evening and good afternoon <laughs> good morning, according to which time it was going out. Whatever we're oh, transmitting. Uh, I'm I went, I, and I never, never, I never made fun of you because you, you were, uh, you, you, you weren't of this country, are you? I mean, you're, you're from a, yes, the antipodes, from another land, of course. You, you seem to be losing a little bit of your burr now. You know, one time it was hello, Ken. Well, uh, you know what I mean. Good day, Ken. Are. How are you? Well, good day. Nice I'm, talking uh, to you. But now it's, it's, it's you're, you're going more of a brummy now, aren't you? Well, I've been in Birmingham a long time. You a are long time. Okay. You'll be talking about Enoch and Eli soon. <laughs> I'll get you some lessons, an electrocution lesson from Tommy Munden. What are your... Uh, <laughs> it's a great star. What are your um, accents like? You're pretty good, aren't you? Not bad, not bad, not bad. It's, it's all to do with uh, how you hear them and then you try to reproduce them. Yeah, yeah some people are uh, better than others, but I can do, uh, I can do most of them. Uh, and it comes in very handy because I can tell Enoch and Eli jokes. And uh, then when I go up north, why, I, you know, you're a canny lad. Michael Owen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, don't they say a word about Michael she Alan Shearer, Michael Oon? So I do the Jordy and, uh, hey, there she knows, hey, 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 good cracker, hey, hey. So, yeah, yeah, you get, uh, and then, like, further down south of Oar, my dears, hello, my lovely, hello, my handsome, and that's the men to each other. But this is, this is all part of identifying with the audience anyway, and, and doing a bit yes. of that sort of material oh, wins yeah. them over pretty quickly, I'd have Oh, you have, to, you have to learn to uh, points, points of reference, points of contact. Uh, you have to talk something relevant, relevant, that's what it is. So um, when in Rome, do the Romanians do? So, I was, I was... That's where the Diddy men came from. The Diddy men came from, <laughs> somebody said to me once, very, about 1954, 55, very, soon after the profession, you know, Dodd, he said, you get on very well with children. I said, yeah, I went to school with them, you know. He said, well, you ought to find a, 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 a you ought to find a point of contact. So, lo and behold, I went out of our, um, down the bottom of our garden to think, I often do that, I often go to the bottom of the garden and went until the tortoise gets there and turn it around the other way, but... <laughs> Uh, and all of a sudden, I saw these little men, these little yeah, men, yeah, little diddy men, yeah. and that's where, they, that's where they all came from. I was uh, at the time I was doing, uh, I was doing your job. I was doing a, a, a radio, uh, you know, com uh, presenter, presenter, presentation. And, uh, thank you. I was doing radio presentation, and um, I was doing Housewives Choice. I was the first comic to do Housewives Choice, yeah. and I was doing, yeah, and I got told off for, for not playing enough records. Uh, as many. So I used to say, and here is, here is a song, here is a song, a record for all those men who are driving past work. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so, and the Diddy men were, uh, so that, that was their debut. And so I realised I'd have to get them uh, an Englishman, an Irishman, a Scotsman, and a Welshman, and, um, all the others, you know. Yeah. That's great. Now, as I've been trying to say since we started the interview, oh, I... Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> just yes, come yes, in. Just come You're in. Gone. I oh. was watching... Uh, Kenneth Branagh's Hamlet oh, on, Kenneth on the box a little while ago. Kenneth Albrun, yeah. And who should turn up? Miming. As yo. Yes, Yorick, Yorick. He phoned me up, uh, Kenneth Albrun phoned me up one day and he said, uh, Ken, how would you like to play in Hamlet? Well, I said, I've got the legs for it, you know, I can do it, you know. No, 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 it's not, not uh, Hamlet. Um, how would you like to play the part of Yorick? I said, it's, 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 he's a skull. Ah, yes, he said, but we're going to show him in a flashback in the film when he was fully fleshed. We, uh, <laughs> uh, so there I'm standing one day, standing in this huge banqueting hall, this this huge camera. I've got the camera, the, the crane and all that, and all, about six or seven people all hanging onto it. It looked like the, uh, it was the size of a, you know, of a, of a, a people carrier yeah. going crapping around the table and right opposite me is the, the beautiful, voluptuous 
Julie Christie. To my left is Derek, Derek Jacobi, and to my right is Brian Blessed, and then the young, the junior um, Hamlet over there. And uh, he said, well, well, "Would I, I?" He couldn't actually put words into my mouth because we can't uh, invent words for Willie. But he said, "Would you? Uh, would you tell some jokes?" So I, I already, I'd sussed this. I would have to do this. So I got, uh, I'd, I'd swatted up on some uh, actor and actresses' jokes, you know. So and of course the actors, they were around the table, they were, oh, they were hooting and laughing. If anybody, if anybody's ever. Uh, Trace the trouble to try and lip read, I'll be in trouble. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was very enjoyable. Tears. Except get, getting up in the morning. God, you, you've got to be in the makeup chair about half past six. On an earthly hour. Oh, yeah. The shepherd's hours. Tears for Susan Ears. Where did yeah. that come from? That was, um, they, as I say, I sent these songs and uh, and uh, we recorded them. It was actually, uh, to begin with, Tears, about 1920-something, I don't know, probably before I was born. Uh, it was a waltz uh, written by an American um, man, Al Capano. <laughs> he must have, that must be a gag, so Al Capano. But, but you but did was, tremendously well with it. Well, they, they, Jimmy Phillips said, this would go, if you put this into four, as a sort of a slight country feel, you'll, uh, you might have one. So we did it. And when, when you used to do uh, recordings in those days, you'd do three one in, a, in an afternoon at Abbey Road. Oh, yeah. And I remember one was Tears, one was the river, and, and one, one of the other one was. Um, and we got the wax dubbing. So I, used to, I was at the Palladium at the time. I was doing this 42 weeks at the Palladium, twice nightly. Oh, and, uh, I played it to visitors that come in, and people say, oh, I like that one, The River, because it was a beautiful melody. And then then somebody, one day, somebody said, that Tears one, that's a real Back of the Shara song, a real Back of the Coach song, you know. I said, that's it, that's the one we do then. So it, uh, we released it about the uh, May or the June, and it stayed in the charts for, oh, about 18, 20-odd 20 week, 20 weeks. And Wonderful. knocked the Beatles off number one. No, it kept them off. Kept them. It didn't knock them off. I don't think it did. It it kept them out of number one for oh about a dozen weeks. So two million, two million, and this was in the 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 boom time of uh, uh, rock and roll. You know, yeah. uh, Beatles, Rolling Stones, Elvis Presley. But I think people just wanted just a bit wanted a change. Okay, that let's pe- let's have a listen to this. Is Doddy it's, Rocky? It's very slow and it's very uh, mournful. But it's uh, don't forget the last line means uh, turn our tears of regret once more. To tears of happiness, so that so that makes it all right. Tears for souvenirs are all you left me. Memories of a love. Can't believe you could forget me. After all those happy hours we spent, tears have been my only consolation. But tears can't mend a broken heart, I must confess. Let's forgive and forget, turn our tears of regret once more. But tears can't mend a broken heart, I must confess. Let's forgive and forget, turn our tears of regret once more to tears of happiness. Happiness. 
Let's forgive and forget. Turn our tears of regret. Once more, two tears of happiness. Tears, 1965, huh? Yeah. 1965, the same year I came to the Birmingham Hippodrome uh, in pantomime, Humpty Dumpty, and the, the record still stands. The, we ran right through till... The, well, I think we gave Easter eggs away on the stage. Really? And it was a great show. We did Humpty Dumpty there. Earlier we mentioned your appearance in Hamlet. Can yes. we... Can we talk about what happened when you went to Stratford to deliver, deliver yes, a lecture? Yes, they, uh, they phoned me up from the Royal Shakespeare and they said, would you like to come and give us a talk, a lecture, you know, a penny lecture, we will give us a talk on, on comedy? Well, I, I thought they were, they were kidding. I said, yeah. Me? I said, you, me? Uh, well, I've, I've done a little bit of Shakespeare. I said, uh, no, no, we'd like to. So I trotted along. It's part of, it was part of their um, a, a week of uh, examining and theorising and analysing comedy. So I went along there, and I yeah, it was most enjoyable. I I I, I was supposed to speak for uh, how long? Was I supposed to do an hour? I think we did two hours. That'll be and right. We're talking about uh, uh, the great William, and uh, oh, I never realised. But to, to to do this, I had to uh, swat up again on on Shakespeare. So I read. Uh, my father had a theory that if you wanted to know anything, you go to the library. So I got a half a dozen books out uh, on on uh, Willie Shakespeare's life. And I never, it's so interesting, it really is. There's politics, there's, uh, there's, uh, there's uh, conflict, there's, uh, there's politics, religion, there's, um, rivalry, there's, there's, he was quite a good businessman. I never realized how good, how good a businessman, I'm quite envious. He, and what, uh, what about the humor of those times? The humor of those times? We laugh at the same things today as they were there, the, the same subjects, men and women, mostly men and women, uh, romance, Sex, if you're allowed to say it on this program, um, <laughs> uh, uh, buying and selling, you know, money, wealth, intrigue, um, uh, people pretending to be somebody that they're not, you know, disguises, mistakes. So this exactly the same thing, all, but in a different, uh, in, in a different language. Because he was the he was the maestro of, of the English language. He was he was a poet. He was an actor. He was a dramatist. He was such a, w- a wonderful man, a, ge- a genius, uh, a, 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 a beautiful poet. He uh, he was every. It was his choice of words and where he put them and the, the rhythms and the the. Uh, it, when you really start reading Shakespeare and try to understand him, I played Malvolio uh, here in uh, in, in uh, Twelfth Night, and uh, I should, if I wasn't on the stage, the tannoy would be going on. You would with the. The other actor, the text of the play coming through, and every now and again, it was like somebody switching a light on in your head. You think, "Oh, that's what he meant when he said all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players." And we are—we're all pretending, we're all acting. You're pretending to be a radio presenter. I'm pretending <laughs> to be a comedian. <laughs> it's not and I think I'm making a better fist of it than you. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Well, you, 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 hard, great... you hardly speak, do you? <laughs> You hardly speak as me. You're so inarticulate. You know, the, I, here's me, Patrick, and, and you don't you don't say, Ken. I'd like to ask you a meaningful question. Ken, I'd like to ask you a meaningful question. Good it'll, lad. It'll be a waste of time because you won't answer it. You've been doing so much research into humour all your life, really, yeah. and um, I'd have thought that this Shakespearean work must have opened up a whole new avenue for oh, you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, when you, when you say reach, I'm, not, I'm only a, 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 a comic from Naughty Ashman. I'm very interested in comedy, and I, my passion, uh, my obsession is, is finding uh, the different styles and the different... See, when you say the word humour yeah, or the comedy, it's like saying the word music. There, there are different kinds of... There are all different kinds and styles of music, from, from classical to uh, to rock and roll and country and western. Well, it's the same with comedy and humour. There's all different kinds of comedians and all different kinds of material that they use, all different styles. So it's, it's fascinating just to, to, to delve and to listen and to analyse and to theorise how they did it and how Shakespeare did it. He was a great one for puns, you know. Puns, puns, yeah. and puns, puns are marvellous things. As, uh, the, the, I always think puns is like a, a little gateway between two two fields of thought, and if you can open the gate and get through, you can have, you have some good laughs. Oh, 
love is like a violin With its strings around your heart Soft and sweet as dreams begin Sadly crying when you part Make my heart your violin Make now and tell me this In the music of a kiss Let me hear you say I love you A violin is tender When love is young and shy It knows the thrill The heartache of goodbye Its song may bring desire And melancholy too For that caress of rapture That only Love is like a violin With its strings around your heart Soft and sweet as dreams begin Sadly cry My heart, your violin. Wait now and tell me this. In the music of a kiss, let me hear you say. I love Ken Dodd, Love is Like a Violin. Ken, that was another one of your big 60s hits. Yeah, that, that was the one. That was the first the version number one. Very precise, very slow, but very precise, because that was the way people did uh, sing in those days. I often wonder whether it might have been better, um, I don't know, over the years, had I... Uh, it, all the uh, pop singers, they all they all had get like a sort of a transatlantic accent, going, I love you, baby, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I could never do that. I, I, I don't know. I, I was taught that the, 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 the correct way was to... to, uh, to you do the words as the, as the, uh, they were meant to be. Yeah, have, yeah. You, have you ever worked overseas, Ken? Yes, yes. I, I worked in uh, worked in Canada. Uh, I've done some in Toronto. Uh, I, I once went to uh, with with uh, six hundred drunken plumbers. We went to Mexico. This was a, a special trade thing. Yeah. If they bought if they bought so many back boilers, they, they were given a trip to uh, to Acapulco. So uh, we all I, I was booked as the turn. The, I was booked as, the, as so. Uh, have you ever tried? Have you ever tried to crack America or anything like that? No, no. Well, no, no. I haven't. But 
I, I have played to lots of American audiences at the Palladium, because the Palladium is the star. When you when you play the Palladium, the Palladium Theatre is the star, and uh, they get uh, all different groups uh, several nights. I mean, don't forget, I was there from Easter until Christmas, mm-hmm. and uh, during the season, twice nightly, three times on the Saturday, oh, go on, three times on the Saturday. Uh, the, the entire theatre would be booked out, and uh, you'd know when the acts were in, because as you went on the stage, you were blinded right away by a, f- a, a brilliant flash of light, because all Americans wear spectacles, whether they need them or not, and all Americans Mer- wear glasses, and, even the la- and the ladies wear the ones with the diamante wings at the side, so everybody was, everybody was sitting there, with the, and all the light from the stage would bounce back off this sea of glass, and you'd say, oh, I'm the rain. Now, some nights you'd go like a rocket. You know, on, uh, the Yanks would, oh, they'd lap it up, they'd love it. Uh, and other nights you, you'd, you'd really struggle to fight them all the way. D- do the Americans laugh at the same sort mm. of things that we do, yes, or do you yes. have to work harder? No, uh, well, you might have to t- swap some of the idiom, some of the language round. Uh, you know, they, they, don't, they don't ride in lifts, you know, they ride in elevators. And, um, you know, there, there are certain things that you, you'd have to uh, change. But we soon got used to that. I was okay, yeah. Well, they're yeah. right with your surreal stuff, because you can be totally surreal oh, yeah, when well, you cry. Don't, don't forget, they get some wonderful, wonderful comics. Uh, Emo Phillips and people like that. Oh, absolutely. And, and that wonderful man who... Uh, oh, just one coming in. But he, he does he did a lot of... He just sort of stands there and comes out with all these crazy lines all the time. Uh, oh yeah, they they. Uh, well, I think I think we've got to admit the Americans invented lunacy. Certainly, <laughs> 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 been crazy. Unless it could have been the could be the Australians, of course. You know, what's they, this? They what's do everything <laughs> upside down. You know, what's, what's what's this painting story of yours? Uh, that the, it, it's go, you're going to be. Oh, yes, you're going to be hung. I, I am hung. I am hung. I'm in the, in the National Portrait Gallery. A gentleman called David Copley uh, followed me around the country uh, doing sittings and, and all sketches and things like that. And uh, he produced this, uh, this wonderful sort of portrait of a comedian who's just come off stage, shattered, standing there in his vest and uh, wondering how, uh, how some of the gags went, how some of the jokes went, some, how, why they laughed and why they didn't laugh. And uh, it's, a great, it's a great sort of um, uh, puzzle pitch, a great uh, enigma, I think, because you don't know what he's thinking. I know what he's thinking, but, uh, <laughs> and, and he's just captured, he's just captured the moment, captured a wonderful moment. And uh, the National Portrait Gallery, the people there, they thought it was uh, they, they, these things. I think he's the, the director... And I think he'd seen it at an exhibition, I think, in, in Oxford. Yeah. And uh, he said, right, we'll have that. And so they, uh, the, the trustees bought it for the uh, National Portrait. So I'm, I'm hung there among some very illustrious people, uh, among some great, some great... Um, yeah, Ken, as the years pass, as the years pass, do you find it harder to keep up the momentum? I mean, most people will go on stage and do a two and a half, three hour show. You are still capable of going on at uh, 7.30 and coming off at 12.45. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm stage struck. That's right. I like yeah, it. But, I love but you're it. also, you're also like the rest of us, knocking on. Do you, fi- oh, well, do you yeah. find that a strain? Oh yes, yes, yes it, it takes you out of it. You really, you're exhausted at the end of it because, uh, and you need to uh, top up on uh, plenty of um, uh, healthy drinks like lager. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you have to, uh, you know, you, you eat uh, food to give you energy, and um, you know, several glucose tablets. Um, that's all. That's all. Just as far as you go, you, you don't drink during the show. You don't drink at all. Afterwards, you can uh, you can have a slurp, but not during the show because uh, you have to watch what you. Keep your brain alert. Well, I mean, I, no, it's, I, 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 would, I, I wouldn't dare ask you to even mention the word retirement because that's silly. But as far as you're concerned, would you start cutting back and doing a little, a little less, which is still oh, twice as so, much as anyone else does? As, as the bones start hurting, yes, <laughs> as the bones, uh, as, as, as arthritis sets in, yes, I think you have to say, oh, God, oh, dear, um, oh, God, oh, how do, uh, do I have to go up those stairs again to that dressing room? So people who so, are going to see you in theatres in the next few months... Uh, we'll, no, I we'll, didn't we'll, say we'll... yet. Not yet. No, no, I'm not putting on. No, no, not yet. No, I was no, going to say, will no. they, will they be able no, to a, it's send a the party. baby to the home? It's a party. It's a, it's a fun. It's a fun party. It's it's and, and once once you've uh, got the audience on your side and we're all having a ball, you don't want to be a, don't want to be a party pooper and go home early. But the doors aren't locked, so you can go. You know, it's all right. But the, we, uh, I would say, if, if you're going to stick it out, you know. Yes, but the, yeah. Yeah, but, but there's always a shuffle at one point of the evening when the last bus people leave. <laughs> 
Uh, no, no, because um, they, they know uh, when they, they come, they you know a lot of them bring sandwiches and thermos <laughs> and and, uh, and uh, blankets. And, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I love I love the I love the job and I love being a. Um, a comedian, and I love being an entertainer. So uh, while the audience are still there, I'll, I'll still keep doing it. Great stuff, and and also the Avenue of the Stars. You're there as well. Well, that was a big thing about uh, they had this big television thing where they uh, they're trying to emulate the trying to Im imitate the American idea. They uh, lost any where they have the footprints in the cement. We've got uh, what the heck have we got? We have stars. It's in the it's in the courtyard of the Actors Church. Which yeah. is uh, in, uh, near um, Covent Garden, and uh, and uh, certain people uh, at top uh, sort of well, they they selected a hundred people who should have their their name on a star on this uh, avenue, this walkway. So uh, uh, the Diddy does this does this cover all of time or just the current the current era? No, it goes right back, way back. It goes uh, uh, Sir Lawrence Olivier is there, yeah. Richard Burton, uh, Elizabeth Taylor, Vivian Lee. Um, yes, some, it's all big, big, illustrious does people. That, does that thrill you to be part yeah, of it? Yeah, of course it does. Yeah, it's nice. Lovely, lovely to have a little uh, accolade. It's, uh, it's nice. Uh, here in Radio Merseyside, I was given a, a sort of a star treatment of a couple of years ago as, as, a, as a, well, what, you know, the, the top Merseysider. So, yeah, it, it does mean a lot when you your friends and colleagues and neighbours and, and all get together and say, yeah, you know, you, 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 you're, you're still doing a good job, Doddy. Keep going. Have you ever bombed? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, my planet. You wouldn't be human, would you, if you hadn't uh, had your share of, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's not always... Uh, sometimes you can you bl blame yourself, because um, and sometimes you can blame the... Uh, what's what's going on around you, you know. Uh, you never blame the audience. The no such thing as uh, bad audiences, it's only bad comedians. <laughs> So yeah, that's, that's right, is it? Quite seriously. That's no, right. it isn't. no, it isn't right, no. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes an audience can be affected by the weather or some bad news or uh, anxiety. Um, uh, you know, your, your first 30 seconds you go on the stage, that's when you build the bridge between you and the audience saying, By Jove, what a beautiful day! And you're supposed to be in then. They're supposed to, uh, well, they have come to see, they've paid you the gracious compliment of it all by, you know, buying a ticket to come and see you. So yes, that's, that's a wonderful plus but uh, you can sometimes if the if the, if the uh, PA equipment is